Recently, I made this little blob creature visual effect shot, and so today I wanted to show you exactly how I made it. Don't worry, this is relatively simple to make, so let's go ahead and hop into it. Before we get started, I just want to say that all of the footage and the HRI that we're going to be using in today's video is going to be provided by Visual Effects Oasis. This is my own asset library that I'm creating. You can find the Kickstarter link in the description below. Here is a quick trailer if you are interested. Imagine for a second you weren't limited by your visual effects equipment, where you could translate your dreams to the big screen using cinema grade assets. Well, that's no longer a dream. Introducing VFX Oasis. Again, I would greatly appreciate it if you guys supported our Kickstarter, link is down below. Okay, so here is our starting scene. You can see that we have a few things in here already. First of all, we have the camera track to our footage, and then we also have some lighting already baked into the shot. Now, I actually captured my own HRI for this shot that was shot the exact same place that this cube is here. So you can see that the lighting is matching perfectly already. And then also I have a little ground plane. If I come out to solid view right here, that is just projecting the texture onto that just so that we get some nice reflections when we add our creature into the scene. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, now, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and add in our object. You might think that we want to do mesh and then UV sphere, and that would be fine. But if you see the top of the UV sphere, it actually has an ingons baked into it. So a quick thing I, I've been doing recently is if you come up to edit, we'll go to preferences and down to add ons. If you type in extra, uh, you should see two things right here, extra mesh objects and extra curve objects here. We need to have mesh uh, objects selected right here, and then you can just save your preferences. The reason being is because instead of the UV sphere, we're going to be using the go to mesh and then down to the round cube. The round cube is the same exact uh, dimensions as the sphere, but now instead of having a top, we have a uh, quad geometry all throughout the mesh. It's just going to be really nice, especially with dealing with uh, displacement that we're going to be doing. Anyways, we can go ahead and position our little creature exactly where we want them to be. So right there, maybe scale them uh, to however you want it. And that is looking pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and add some a few things. First of all, you can see that we don't have a lot of geometry to work with. So we do need to go ahead and add a quick uh, subdivision surface modifier. So we can go ahead and add that in. I'll set that to like three, for example. We can also come over here, right click and shade smooth, uh, just so it's smooth shading on the object. Next, let's do some of the distortion that we were talking about. That is super easy. We're going to be doing some displace modifier. So just add a displace modifier. By default, there's no texture assigned to it. So let's click new, go to the texture settings. And then instead of using a image or movie, I'm going to be using clouds. So that's basically a Perlin noise uh, inside of Blender so that we can get some effects like this. You can see this is super exaggerated. This is where you can have a little bit of fun with it, uh, depending on the final look that you want to go for. I'm going to mess around with the size of the Perlin noise up until it's something like that. I wanted mine kind of very smooth. You can also play around with depth. I find that that adds a little bit more detail if you do want that. Anyways, we'll come back over. There are a few more uh, settings that we can change inside of the displace node itself. So we have strength, obviously affects the strength. That is totally fine. Uh, direction, we can play around with that. Uh, the one thing that I do want to play around with uh, in order to affect uh, the actual movement of the displacement, because right now it's not actually moving throughout the clip. Also, real quick, I'm going to come up to my camera and disable the background images just so we get better playback. But as you can see throughout the entire shot, it's not actually updating. And so what we want to do is we want to have uh, this uh, coordinate instead of being local, we want to set it to an object. And so uh, we do need to define an object. Uh, I'm actually going to be creating a new object. We'll come over to the empty, uh, just the plain axis empty right there. And now if we come back into our orb and uh, select the object to be our new empty, you can see wherever we move around our empty, it's actually going to be updating to that uh, actual displacement. So anyways, uh, I do uh, like it. I wanted my blob to kind of go upwards, right? Um, what we can do is we can go in. Uh, I'm going to come over to the item properties and we're going to animate uh, these values. So the location in the Z again, location Z is up and down. So I'm going to type up here hashtag frame and then we're going to do like divided by like 10 or something like that just to slow it down a little bit. Uh, so now you can see it's moving up way, way too fast. So it's uh, super, super fast. We might even do like 100. Let's see what 100 does. Does. And there you go. That's much, much slower. Uh, that's just how you get it to, um, you know, have the right speeds and everything. And so this is exactly what I did. You can see it's uh, moving upwards. So depending on how you actually want it to move, if you want to move it in the uh, Y direction, you can see it's like doing stuff like that. But again, I knew I wanted all my waves of the blob to be going upwards. So that's why I'm doing the Z location. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and add a material to this object. I'm gonna go ahead and press new. Uh, this is just the shader editor, by the way. Uh, we're gonna just be sticking to the principled BSDF for this shot. First thing I wanna do is I wanna add some subsurface scattering. Uh, if you imagine anything that's fleshy, anything that has like kind of penetrating through the actual uh, surface of the actual object, it's gonna have some sub subsurface scattering. So we're gonna turn the weight all the way up to one. You can see up here, we're starting to get like some pink hues and stuff like that. Uh, down here, the radius is basically, for lack of a better term, RGB values. Uh, we're going to be using uh, more of the red channel. So I believe in testing, I set the red to about uh, 70. And now you can see, see we're seeing a lot more pink versus a lot more green or blues if we play around with some of these down here. So again, 70 is the value I found, found that works for me, but uh, you can play around with it yourself. Next, let's uh, make it a little bit more reflective. So uh, something like a point, uh, 0 0.05 for me. I never like to go all the way down to zero. I just find that that looks too perfect uh, for CGI. So I always uh, push it up to a uh, somewhere close to zero down there. Uh, anyway, the final thing that I want to do is maybe uh, push the specular up a little bit just so we get some more specular highlights and stuff when we add in our bump, uh, which is what we're going to be doing now. We need some more kind of like fleshy bits uh, on our actual thing, some roughness for those, uh, uh, you know, think of this is a, a living, breathing object is going to have, uh, you know, very fleshy uh, kind of look to it. And so we're going to add a bump node. The bump node is going to give us some uh, kind of faking some uh, detail onto our actual mesh, mesh. So we'll plug the normal onto the normal. And then I'll uh, do a noise texture node. And a uh, quick tip is you can go instead of 3D, you want to set it to 4D because we're going to be using this W value down here to actually affect it and make it look like it's actually physically moving. Uh, anyway, we can plug the factor into the height here. And now you can see it's giving us a lot more detail. Of course, we do need a, a kind of nail these numbers down i'll set this to 10 and then the detail will push up to give this more of like a fleshy bit you can see it's starting to look a lot more like flesh over here and then uh, we'll maybe play around with the strength of the bump something like that uh, and then now we can finally affect the base color the base color i like to leave for last because it does influence some of these th things so now if you kind of zoom up here you can still see we're getting some of that uh, red bleed through but now it's a kind of darker black color it kind of reads more like a uh, the blob that i'm going for specifically so yes yeah, so that is looking pretty good uh, you can of course play around with some different things depending on what you want to do what I actually might do uh, again we did use a HRI for this shot you can see we're getting some nice kind of specular highlights uh, where these lights are but I do want to try to push those as much as possible so what I might do is I might add a few more lights in my scene just to help out the HRI as much as possible so I'll bring these lights back here and move them up exactly where the lights are the nice thing is I went ahead and already uh, set this scene up perfectly in the camera tracking process so I can uh, perfectly get some of that. Uh, anyways, you can see now we're getting exactly what we're kind of looking for. Some of this kind of bleed through like it's actually a living, uh, breathing object. So I'll uh, come over here and I'll play around with some of these values. I do want to match the kind of lighting of this. So I'll uh, do our color picker and might try to select some of the yellow light over here. So now it's a little bit more matching the shot. And then of course you can play around with the power of this as well uh, to get it more matching to what you want it to do. So there you go. Uh, now this is a little bit too see-through. So let's see if we can do something about that. So we'll play around with the base color a little bit more might uh, decrease the weight something like that you can also decrease this as well we'll go to like a 50 uh, just play around with it and stuff like that and this is uh, all the stuff that you can do to get it looking exactly how you like it let's go ahead and give this a test render to see how this is looking in a rendered view so let's uh, render an image Okay, so here's the result that we're getting. It looks pretty good. Uh, we are now ready to go ahead and uh, do some other stuff to get this to be a little bit more animated, a little bit cool looking. Uh, so we'll come back into a render view over here. And I do want to go ahead and animate uh, this W value. I find animating it adds a little bit of flair to it, a little bit of movement uh, that we wouldn't have otherwise. So I'll come over to frame one is where we want to start the animation. And then I'll just hit I over here. I is to add a keyframe. So uh, we'll at frame one have W to be zero. Then I'll come to the very last frame. And I believe in testing, I did like a 0.5. But of course, depending on how fast you want it to move, you can set a different number. Again, just 
pressing I until it's yellow and we have this result. Uh, this is also where we can come back and maybe play around with some other stuff. I might turn the specular down. I don't think we need it that that strong. And then also you can add, uh, you know, more resolution to it if you want it to be a little bit smoother. Say some of your uh, kind of reflections are looking a little bit jagged or something like that. That's how you would affect them over here. And yeah, this is where you can play around with it, get a result that works for you. And then once we are done, we can go ahead and uh, render the animation up here. Again, here is the final shot that we got from this video. I've used this method plenty of times in visual effects and advertising to get really cool results. Thanks again for watching guys and make sure to check out Visual Effects Oasis. I'll have a link in the description below.